Hey everyone, welcome back to another PNSO review. Today we're taking a look at Austin, the Pachycephalosaurus. PNSO has been on an absolute rampage since they came back full force, and I do mean full force about six months ago. They've been pretty much giving us a new release almost every week. Yeah, they took a little bit of a break uh, here and there, but it's just staggering the amount of fantastic figures they've given us in such a short amount of time. They're really putting other dinosaur companies on notice. And if you just look at their catalog, it's so diverse with so many great species. It takes years for other companies even to get remotely close to what PNSO has done in a few short months. And now they're rounding out their Hell Creek formation. This little Pachycephalosaurus retails for around $25. And you can easily order this figure off of Amazon. I'll leave a link to this figure down in the description below. So before we take a closer look at Austin, let's just go over the package really quick. Comes in the standard prehistoric animal models packaging that we've been seeing for a while now. You have a nice picture of Austin on the front. Turn the box over to the side. You get a nice close-up of Austin's head, if my camera would like to focus in on that. And just like every figure in the series, you get a nice little pamphlet with the same artwork that's on the box inside the pamphlet. Like, you know, I've always been really critical of these pamphlets. Obviously, if you've been watching this channel for a while, there's really not that much great information in there. You do get a skeletal, well, a skull of the Pachycephalosaurus because there's hardly any post-cranial remains of the species. But the one cool thing that they've been doing with these pamphlets that actually make them worthwhile, you get this really nice poster on the back. The last few figures have been like this. This is a beautiful, beautiful poster of Pachycephalosaurus. So a, enough about the packaging. Well, let's take a closer look at Austin. So let's start with this 360 degree view of Austin. This is a fantastic looking Pachycephalosaurus figure. Really happy how this figure turned out. Has a lot of nice fine detail on it. The paint job is good. I do have a couple issues with it, but we'll get to that a little bit later on in the review. But all in all, I think it's a great looking figure. Love the bipedal pose, how PNSO pulls off those very proportionate feet and managed to get a bipedal pose out of it. I just think the figure looks really nimble just in that nice active walking pose. Now, one of the complaints I heard about this figure is that it's not bulky enough, especially in the midsection and the base of the tail. But I think I know a reason why for that, and we'll also get to that a little bit later on in the review. So let's just do a couple of quick measurements. This figure is seven inches long from the tip of the tail to the tip of the beak, and just about two and a quarter inches tall to the top of the dome. So Pachycephalosaurus in real life was just under 15 feet long. So with those measurements, I'll put this figure in the 125 scale range. And you also get one accessory inside the box. You get the clear acrylic stand that's been coming with all the PNSO bipedal figures. And I do highly recommend that you use these stands to display your figures. This Pachycephalosaurus, I just got it in the other day, and I have not had it standing up at all by itself. And it barely balances. Like, I'm surprised it has not fallen over once during this review so far. So definitely use those stands that it comes with. So let's zoom and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure style with this really nice head sculpt. Love how the head came out on this figure. You got some nice knobs and spikes on the nose that rim the whole dome on this figure. The top of the dome is nice and shiny and glossy. You got some nice fine scale detail going around the dome and then going down to the eye. You can see the eye is painted blue with a black pupil. If you've been watching this channel, you know I love blue eyes on my dinosaur figures. And then you can see the mouth sculpting right here. The mouth is not really clearly defined on this figure. It's just this little line. You kind of have to like really you know, look closely at just to make out the mouth on here. You can see the beak sculpted in. You have a little ridge of large scales that is decked out in white paint. Now about the paint job, one of the issues I have with the paint job, if you look at the Promotional images on the packaging. Yes, I know PNSO has a habit of like not perfectly matching their figures to their promotional uh, images, but they've gotten a lot better at it, uh, especially in the last few months. Um, the dome on the promotion images was kind of painted like an orange color, and I kind of missed that splash of color. The dome just looked very bland. It's just pretty much like a bone color, so I really do miss that orange on there. And going down to the neck, you can see like some nice folds and wrinkles and some large osteoderms peppered throughout this whole entire figure. You got some nice folds and wrinkles and some very, very fine scale detail. Then going down to the arms, the arms are beautifully sculpted. Very small pachycephalosaurus had very small arms. And you can just see just the fingers barely sculpted in on there. But you do have some nice 
uh, muscle definition on the upper arm, some more of those nice folds and wrinkles. And I'll turn the figure over from the top. You can see had a pretty wide chest cavity, wide hips, and a wild tail base. Now, some people think that it's not wide enough, but you have to remember with pachycephalosaurs, there's very, very little to hardly any uh, post cranial remains for most species, especially for pachycephalosaurus. Now, there is one specimen, the sandy specimen. It's a specimen of pachycephalosaurus, but I don't think it's been described into an actual species yet. And that is the most postcranial remains of a pachycephalosaurus ever discovered. And I feel like that this figure is based off that skeletal reconstruction. I actually went online and found like a 3D model of it. You can see the tail and the chest cavity match up pretty well with that uh, 3D model. So I think that's what this figure is based off of. And I am okay with that. And then going back down to the side, you can see the hind legs are beautifully sculpted. A lot of nice muscle definition and detail. You can see more of those osteoderms peppered in throughout. Going down to the hind feet, toe claws are painted in black with a uh, glossy paint. Turn the figure over. The underside of the figure is cream colored. And then going down over here, you can just barely make it out. It has the tiniest, tiniest little butthole. And then going down to the tail, more of those osteoderms, folds and wrinkles, and very, very fine scale detail. Now, the other part about the paint job that I was not a fan of, you know, the color works. But just on this side of the figure, you have like these nice yellow blotches mixed in. And then you go to this side of the figure, and you can't see them. You can like kind of make out one. I, for some reason, I feel like this figure might have been misprinted. I feel like the uh, back design should have like came down just a little bit more and it probably would have seen those uh, yellow splotches in there. Just not really a fan of how asymmetrical uh, that pattern looks, but that's just a very minor complaint. I do quite like this figure. Moving on to comparisons, here is Safari Limited's last year's Pachycephalosaurus, which is an absolute excellent figure and here we go with the balancing issues kind of have to rest his uh dome up against the arm of the uh, safari figure you can see both these figures are excellent representations of pachycephalosaurus and one thing to note on the safari one you can see just how wide the uh midsection hips and tail are on this figure versus this one so if you like your pachycephalosaurus a little bit more bulky definitely go with the safari a little bit leaner go with the pianesso and one other thing i need to point out on the safari that i absolutely love 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 how it includes a post cranial lesion uh this type of injury was very common on pachycephalosaur fossils and next up here are some more pachycephalosaur figures here is safari limit is draco rex and papo's stygimolic now depending who you talk to these are all either different species or growth stages of pachycephalosaurus the Draco Rex being a juvenile, the Stygimolic being a subadult, and the Pachycephalosaurus being the adult form. And here's an odd comparison. Someone pointed this out on Instagram when the promotional images came out of Austin. They thought the color scheme looked very similar to the older Carnegie Collection Diplodocus. And at the time, I would say I would agree with that, but you know, get this figure in hand. Uh, this is more like a an, like an olive green color. I thought it was much brighter in the promotional images, and like even the size of the body looked a little bit more green in the promotional. But I can definitely see where they're coming from. But uh, yeah, it would have been kind of cool if this was like a weird, weird homage to the whole Carnegie Diplodocus. And next up here it is with the recently reviewed Allosaurus, which is another fantastic figure from PNSO. And here's another Hell Creek dinosaur. Here it is with last year's Safari Limited. Edmontosaurus, really hope PNSO does their version of Edmontosaurus. I'd love to see that. They definitely shown that they do love their hadrosaurs, and I hope when they do do one that the figure of this species is huge. And speaking of Hell Creek, here is a nice group shot of all the Hell Creek formation dinosaurs that PNSO has put out so far. Their amazing Wilson Tyrannosaurus, their Ankylosaurus, which is actually the first figure in their prehistoric animal models line, and I still absolutely love this one. It still remains one of my favorites. Their Triceratops, and here's the Packy. So yeah, really nice that they're uh, hammering out the Hell Creek dinosaurs. Just a few more species to do, and hopefully we'll get that in the next couple of years. So final thoughts on Austin. I think this is a great representation of Pachycephalosaurus. It's nice to see PNSO doing smaller dinosaur species, and I hope they do continue that trend. I'd love to see some more smaller species like Camptosaurus and Dryosaurus from them in the near future.
I only have a couple complaints with this figure. You know, one is like the lack of color on the dome, and just not a fan of how you know asymmetrical the pattern looks. Like you go, you get this nice, uh, you know, splotching along the side over here and the other side of the figure. It doesn't have that. Like I said, I think this mine was like slightly misprinted when it was getting painted at the factory. But those are just minor, minor grapes. I am really, really happy with this figure all around. And like I said at the beginning of the review, you can easily pick this figure up off of Amazon. Link to that listing is down below in the description. So that would do it for the review. Uh, I have some Rebore stuff coming in. Still got a couple more Collecte figures to work on. Uh, new Jurassic World stuff should be coming in relatively shortly. So be on the lookout for all those reviews. And remember, as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.